Today we're going to talk about the volume pedal. Fully analog signal chain, it's a volume pedal that does a lot more than just volume. It's a volume based multi-effect. So you've got volume, compressor, tremolo, um, volume based effects and a limiter. It's a fully analog signal chain but it's digitally controlled which means we've got a USB connection to a USB MIDI and a remote desktop editor which is one of the key things I'm going to show you tonight and it's MIDI controlled as well. So, first thing I'm going to do is flick over and show you our editor. This runs on PC and OS X. What we have here is on the top section you have the presets where you can select the presets, save presets, delete presets, some metering in the middle section, a compressor graph to show you how the compressor is set up and at the bottom you can configure all of the different effects. Along the top you can select, you can edit the preset. In MIDI there's various MIDI configuration you can set up for how the MIDI controls everything and on the setup page it lets you configure more involved settings um, so, so some customization essentially and update firmware and that kind of thing. But today I'm just going to go and look at the preset editing and give a very quick overview of how that works. So if I start with a very very simple preset which is a very simple volume pedal. So what I have here is I will zoom in on the top section so you can see how this is set up. All I have done is I've gone into this menu, select it, select the factory presets and select the first factory preset. And when you, you get a volume pedal, this preset is always available to you. If I go to the bottom section, so you can see that more clearly, here, what you do is you select the tab to edit the effect you want to edit. And here we've selected the volume effect, the effect's enabled, and a simple volume effect is set up. The way the volume works is Parameters can either be static, so you just set a parameter, or a parameter can have a high and a corresponding low value for that parameter. On the pedal itself, this is done by adjusting the high and low button. So for example, if you want to set the gain of the pedal, you can just toggle that button to select the high and the low gain. On the editor, you can configure all the parameters easily, and I'll show you how we do that. Here we have the gain, the level, and it's set for a high gain of 0 dB and a low gain of minus 48 dB. So essentially it's going to cut the signal level. We have a response curve, which is how the pedal maps to that, that control. So if I play something, just play a chord and fade in the pedal and fade it in and out. You have a very basic volume pedal. It sounds nice and smooth because it's fully analog. You don't get any digital artifacts, but the digital control means there's no potentiometer in there that can get scratchy. So it's a beautiful, smooth fade. Now, if I go back to the editor to show you more about an overview of the effects, and then we'll delve in it and edit some effects just to give you an idea how, how, how you can do that. If I go back to the editor and again show you on the bottom, we have a gate, a noise gate, a compressor, an LFO, which is really a tremolo, and volume effects. And there's also a limiter stuck on the end, which ensures that if the signal level is too high, you can prevent it clipping. Now, the volume has a very large headroom to it. So, and a lot of gain. So it's very easy for the volume pedal to overdrive other effects and you may not want that to happen. So the limiter is there to allow you to limit the signal with soft clipping so you don't get harsh artifacts that you may get otherwise. Or you can open the limiter and let it overdrive your valve amp and get really nice valve overdrive. Back to the effects. If you start off with the, the gate, we have a gain reduction amount of attenuation, which we'll show you in a second, a 
a threshold where it operates on and an attack in release time. Now, if I flip back to the full editor, so you can see the, the whole picture, the graph at the top is showing the compression curve, but also the, the, the curve for the gate. So if I, if I turn volume, the volume effect off, and turn the gate effect on, you'll see just here it starts to turn. So it's a very, very soft gate. If I increase the amount of reduction, it makes the knee harder, like that. And the ratio is steeper as well. So I can vary the, the sharpness of that, I, I can vary the threshold where it cuts in, and I can vary attack and release times. So very easily I can, I can create a noise gate that's either very harsh or incredibly subtle, maybe only given 3 or 6 dB of gain reduction just to, to drop the noise below what you want. If you go to the compressor next, I'll turn the, the gate off and go to the compressor and enable the compressor. It's very like a, a standard 4 knob compressor. You've got an amount which is really a combination of the ratio and the knee of the compressor, a threshold which is where it starts to, the compression starts to cut in, attack time, release time, and that's your standard four knobs. And we've also got a level trim. Now what the level trim does is it, it acts like an automatic makeup gain, where the makeup gain is intelligently increased to compensate for any drop in level that the compressor causes. Now if I put this back to the, the graph so you can see the full screen, so you can see what's going on, again I, I can change the knee and the ratio, adjust the threshold, and th this is looking now pretty, pretty much like you, if you had a, a VST plug-in compressor. So it's an analog compressor, but you can use it like a plug-in. If I play something, what you can see there is the gain reduction metering is showing that the compressor is acting, and there's a little cross here. I don't know if you can see that on the on the video, but the little cross is showing you where where the input signal is going on that compression curve. And you can see that there's a lot of compression happening. And if I want to create a, a compressor that gives a lot of clean sustain, all I need to do is drop the threshold down, increase the, the ratio, and now if I just hold a note, you, you get lots of clean sustain. And you can hear it ramping the gain up to maintain that signal level until it drops below the threshold and then it drops again. So very quickly you can go from very subtle compression to almost none. To something quite severe. Like that. So it's very easy to configure but the volume is not a standard compressor like, like other compressors. At uh, so we, we we try to take a twist on things. What we've done is we've taken this compressor but we've got a pedal on the, on, on, on the product so it can be pedal controlled. Now what that means? Well I said earlier that a lot of parameters have a high and a low parameter. So in the compressor when I enable pedal control you then have a high and a low value for all of the compression parameters. So if I go back to the editor, if I turn on pedal control here it is it's no control, turn on pedal control, and I get a whole new set of parameters. If I go back to full screen so you can see what's happening, now I have two sets of parameters. If I adjust the high, I can have a high compression curve. If I adjust the low, I can have a low compression curve, and that's the low compression curve there. And I can adjust the, the threshold just the same, and it's almost like adjusting two compressors. I can set up different attack and release times. But now when I play, if I move the pedal, you'll see the compression curve moves on the fly. So in the first demo I did there, I played two sections but varied the compression parameters in between it. Now what I can do is I can do exactly the same thing, but I can vary the compression on the fly using the pedal. <laughs> by bringing the compression back. Bring it back. 
up again to add sustain in there. Bring the sustain up and then just fade it back out again. So you've got all of the nice things of a nice compressor and the volume is a very nice compressor. It does sound incredibly musical, but you've also got pedal control. So you can do different things. You, you, rather than just having a compressor that's on or off, you can vary the compressor on the fly, which is a, is a really neat thing you, to do. But with, with all of the effects that are controllable, not, they may not just be pedal controlled, but they can also be MIDI controlled. If I make the compressor MIDI controlled, a new parameter appears which lets me select a MIDI controller and this MIDI controller can then act like a remote pedal so rather than having the the compressor just be foot controlled you can automate it if I now let's look at the the LFOs and, and, and cho choose an LFO preset just to let you see some quick LFOs. If I flick back to this section and select a tremolo section there, what, what you have here is you've got some basic parameters that adjust the tempo and, and other things and here you've got one LFO but it's a, du it's a dual LFO tremolo so you can actually click on dual mode and have another LFO running which gives you much more interesting possibilities compared to a normal a normal tremolo that only has one modulation you can combine the modulations but you can also extend that by making things pedal controlled or envelope controlled now what we have here is a tremolo that's pedal controlled where the, the bpm can vary from 300 bpm to 40 bpm by pedal control and the depth doesn't vary the depth is is fixed at minus 12 dB and it's a sine wave so if, if I play it slowly and I'm just moving the pedal there so you can hear the difference in speed and you get a nice smooth variation in tempo but say I want the it, this to be envelope controlled. All I do is I select envelope from the list and now instead of being pedal controlled it's envelope controlled so when I play hard I'll get the high value which is the high BPM and as the signal fades it'll go to the low BPM. So if I just play and hold a chord you can hear as the signal fades away the tempo slows down. We have a, a question um, from Sergio, um, who ha has a volume pedal on, on the way to him very soon. Um, he's asking a question, um, can any parameter be adjusted by the pedal? The answer is no, but the, most parameters that make sense can be adjusted. Some things don't make sense to be adjusted or can't be adjusted because it may cause glitching or whatever. But yeah, most, most things can be, um, and I'll point them out as we go along. For example, in the tremolo, you can see high and low parameters marked here. If I select, to show you something else, if I select retrigger, what retrigger does is when I play a note, the LFO phase will retrigger. Here, for example, there isn't any high and low it, because it, you can't modulate it because it doesn't make sense. If I play a note, <laughs> You can hear the tremolo starting at exactly the same position on each node. If I slow it down, maybe it's more obvious. Like that. But another thing I can do is, is I can add a delay to that. So I can just increase the delay slightly, and that's three seconds. So if, if I now play the same note, you can see it's taken a bit of time for that LFO to fade in. So you can you can start to get more synth-like um, interesting effects that way. If I skip over the LFO 
and go to the volume effect just to show you that quickly and we'll come back we'll come back to some more more details in a minute if I go to the volume effect and I showed you this at the start turn, turn that effect on and if I play it it does nothing because it does nothing because it's acting like a gain control I have to if I play a note play a chord I can adjust the gain and this is just a volume control not that like, exciting perhaps useful as a booster but not terribly exciting as an effect I need to turn on pedal control so if I turn on pedal control I get a set of low and high parameters so I need to make the low do something so stick it down to say minus 53 and if I play and if I show you the, the whole the top of the editor what you see here on this section is an indication of the volume that's going on so you can see it from a distance or when you're setting up and you can't hear and on on the pedal itself we have this set of, of LEDs and these light up just like that um, graphic does to show you the position of the pedal so you know how loud it's going to be without having to hear it so before you actually play something you can be sure the volume set correctly so that so I'm playing this it's a nice smooth volume pedal but of course you can do more than that so here we've got a parameter called fade if I turn fade on I get another type another parameter which is fade time so now what happens is when I move the pedal the the volume will fade in over the given time that I've set so if I set that 2.9 seconds if I play something and then all I'm going to do is just rock the pedal forward and leave it I'll flip to, and if I flip to this you'll see that you'll see it moving better so if I do that again and go backwards just move the pedal and you see it fades out nice and slowly over that time back in again so so it's a great way to get nice smooth fades that would be very very hard to do with a volume pedal on its own especially long fades and, and, and re with reproducible shapes the, the volume pedal gives you an awful lot of control over the shape of how the pedal maps to the volume but also that same shape or the curve the response curve affects the fade so if you look in, in this menu here there's actually an awful lot of different shapes and I can scroll through all the different shapes so it's quite exponential going to linear so more logarithmic then it starts to become more sigmoid like and then inverted sigmoid so you get a, a big variety of, of fades that you can do to, to different sort of fade in and fade out shapes another feature of the volume pedal is is sort of envelope driven fades so if I select control to envelope a whole new set of parameters appears and this essentially is an ADSR envelope here is the a drawing of the envelope and I can vary attack and release times and like that so you get an ADSR envelope and this is based on re-triggering on the note when you play a note it re-triggers so if I just play a chord and you can hear it's just switch, fading in automatically so if I make the time you can make it a little bit faster and just play, play a few notes so you can get quite synth like sounds just by sculpting the sound we'll come back to that in a, in a second the limiter is reasonably simple you just have a limit in dbu and you can control the symmetry so normally a limiter is just the same on the positive and negative but the volume limiter lets you adjust that and, and make the negative adjust separately from the positive now that can be useful in some cases because it can let you tweak the the sonic character of the sound and you can also modulate that so for example you can use the pedal to change the symmetry on the fly so the clipping that occurs will vary slightly and it will give you a slightly different sonic character so what I'd like to do now is just deconstruct a few of the presets we've got just to show you 
what you, how they work, what you can do, and just give you a taste or really of, of what the sort of things you can do with the volume pedal. So if, if I go to the this preset, preset F09, and this is one of the presets in the uh, in the firmware when you, when you get a volume pedal. And if I just play some notes, what, what, what you hear is, is quite nice, it's quite interesting. Now what that's doing is, is actually there's quite a lot going on there. So, so let's go into the editor and, and deconstruct what's happening. First of all, we've got a, a gate so that when, when I'm not playing, it, it will cut the signal. Now, at the moment, this is a bit noisy probably because of some lights. I, I, mean, I can increase the threshold a bit just to sort of trim that down. And you can see the gate's doing, it's acting a bit there. It's quite a subtle gate, so it's not very harsh, but you get quite a lot of gain reduction, keep the noise down. Then, <clears throat> then we have a compressor, which is set to give sustain, so that when, when I'm playing, the note will get a nice clean sustain on it, and it will let the other effects take their course. The LFO is set, oh, let's, I'm on the wrong screen for you there. The, the LFO is set for a fixed tempo, simple sine wave, but what it has is a delay. So it's a delay of two seconds. So when I play a note after two seconds, the waveform will start to fade in, so you start to hear it. So if you listen to the, to the, the vibrato at the end of the note, and you can hear the vibrato is getting stronger as the note's held. Like that. So, if I go to volume, then what you have here is the, an ADSR envelope, just like I explained earlier, where reasonably fast attack, 0.4 of a second, 400 milliseconds, and it's fading from minus 24 dB to 0 dB. That's the shape that it's fading over, a sort of sigmoid like shape. And it's quite a fast release time so that it can recover ready for the next note. And, and that gives you a, that nice effect. You, it's very easy to tweak. If I want to make that a longer, a longer attack, make the tremolo um, have a longer delay, a delay time so it takes longer before it comes in and give it a lot more sustain on the compressor. So bring the threshold down, increase the amount of compression like that, and then if I if I try and play to hear the difference, you see it's a much longer fade in. Similarly, if I want to make the attack faster, very easy to go in and, and make the attack very very fast. Say. 0.1 of a second. And it's still got that long delay on the LFO, so you hear it all start to come in. Like that. So you can get quite interesting, interesting things going very easily. So that's a basic deconstruction of a slightly more complex preset. You've got the gate you've got the, and compressor interacting with each other. Um, you've, you've got some tremolo adding a bit of vibrato at the end and you've got an ADSR envelope going on to, to, to give you synth like sound shaping. And the limiter's not enabled, but of course you can enable the limiter. Particularly if you have a lot of high compression, the limiter's useful to, to trim those peaks and to just really clamp the signal. So that's a very quick overview of the volume pedal and, and what it can do. And
it lets you do some really nice things and what I've, I've just had in recently from from someone who's been designing the presets, I actually came in half an hour ago, is some, some new tremolo presets. So why don't we just very quickly explore a few of those just before we finish, let you see. Because th th this is properly brand new. So if I select the user presets, we have, we have space for 100 factory presets. At the moment, there's only 10 in this version of firmware, but there should, there'll be 30 or 40 presets to start with. You can store a hundred user presets. So I've stored some of these presets in here. So select a preset, say yes, I want to overwrite what I was doing and we can go to see what this preset is doing. It's got two LFOs running with slightly different speeds on them. The, the, the first LFO has a high and low division of 2 and 1, so you can actually change the LFO division on the fly, although you notice the tempo is constant. So when I rock the pedal, you can hear there's a discontinuity there, but there's no, there's no glitch in the LFO, but the speed just changes quickly, just between times 2 and times 1. The second LFO is running slower and then the same speed as other ones. You get this sort of nice character with both LFOs. So if I just play play a chord at the top, a high setting, and low setting. So at the low setting both LFOs are running running the same same speed. So you really only hear one of them. And I, and I change the high. So some, some nice character going from just one LFO to another just by changing the, the, way, the way those divisions work. So quite an easy thing to do. Um, and you can spend a long time tweaking presets to get this sort of thing going on. If we go to another preset, This is emulating an, an optical tremolo, like one of, an old Fender amp where you've got a neon bulb illuminating a, a light dependent resistor. And, and one of the characters of that is that the, the, the attenuation happens quicker than it recovers. So you get an asymmetry in, in that response. Now what we have here is get a trapezoid waveform set up, which then helps recreate that asymmetry. Maybe choose one more to wrap up. Um, let's go for this. This is a, a, another another envelope based tremolo. So it's not using the pedal; it's using the envelope, but you've got two LFOs running with some different divisions going on. So this could be quite interesting. Just to finish off, um, a little indication of what you can do to, to save presets, to load presets, that sort of thing. I showed you the presets here. If I want to save a preset somewhere, I just hit save and it pops up with a window to say where I would like to save it. And I can choose one of the presets to save that too. I can give it a short name, which is what's shown on the, the display on the pedal itself and a long name, which lets me know what it is on the editor. And I just hit save, but I, I, I won't do that just now. Um, on, on the bottom of the editor, 
You can also export presets, save them to files, share them with people, and you can load presets. And you can also do a full backup of the entire unit, so you can save all of your 100 presets, all of your settings, back that up so you don't lose them and restore them if, if anything ever goes wrong. So let's look at some questions that we have. Um, can you tell about MIDI support, MIDI settings? Yes, we, 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 we can do that quickly. Let's, if we go to the top, these are the MIDI settings. So it's partitioned into MIDI in and MIDI out. The, the volume pedal itself acts as a MIDI controller. So when you move the pedal, it will send, send out MIDI. And this is set up here, where the expression controller just sets the MIDI controller you're using. And it will send 14-bit MIDI controllers or 7-bit MIDI controllers, depending on what you choose. You can choose the MIDI channel. But you can also turn the MIDI channel off because sometimes if you're connected over USB and it's sending MIDI over USB, it can go into your sequencer, it can start doing things you're not expecting, it can start doing volume control or expression control and you, you didn't really want that to happen, so you can turn that off as well. You can send program change, which means when you change presets on the unit itself using the, the up and down buttons, it will also send MIDI program change messages out of MIDI to allow you to then synchronize other devices or other songs remotely. So you can change something on the volume pedal and that can then be used to change, change something else in your rig. If I pin MIDI through, now what that's for, we have five pin MIDI and USB MIDI and the volume pedal works out of the box as a USB MIDI interface which means any MIDI going into USB comes out of the 5 pin and any MIDI going into the 5 pin comes out of USB and that's also merged with any any MIDI that goes from the volume pedal itself the expression pedal but if you want to chain devices it's actually quite handy to be able to put MIDI to the in and it's also echoed out of the MIDI out like a through so it works like that and it works like a through a MIDI through so any MIDI going to the 5 pin in will come out of the MIDI out so you can then chain other devices but it's not just a simple through because it also still merges in data from the pedal and it also merges in data from the USB MIDI so the idea is it just does all the merging and everything you would expect it to do but also lets you act as a through without turning off the benefits of, of that MIDI merging. On the left hand side we've got the, the MIDI inputs you can select it to respond on any channel or choose a particular channel you want it to respond on. Foot switch controller lets you turn the, the, the foot switch on the, on the pedal to turn the pedal the effect on and off. You can do that remotely using a MIDI controller. So if you have a, 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 you, you have a big MIDI controller set up, a big MIDI foot pedal, you can have one control that turns the volume on and off and other controls that turn other, other parts of your rig on and off without even touching the volume pedal. And the effect gate controllers let you turn on and off individual effects. So rather than having to change presets to say turn the compressor on and turn the LFO off, you can set MIDI controllers up and activate each individual effect as if it was a separate effect unit. Beyond that, when you have when you have an effect set up, if I if you set set something to be MIDI controlled, you get a new parameter which is the MIDI controller, and that responds on the MIDI input channel that you've selected, and it works just like you would have the pedal. So if I set an effect to be pedal controlled, then if you say the LFO, for example, here, you've got the high and low BPM, that that's a high and low position of the pedal. If I set it to be pedal controlled, sorry, MIDI controlled, then that high and low is a high and low position of the MIDI controller. So it's like a remote foot pedal. I think we can wrap up there. I think we've covered, covered a lot in, in, in this short presentation. Um, I think you can see that the volume, the Sonus volume pedal is much more than a, a normal volume pedal and it's, it's actually much more than a typical compressor and a typical LFO and a typical noise gate, it's highly configurable. You can have all the effects working together to do new interesting sounds 
and the, the, the tweakability you have really sets it apart and you've got that backed up with the, the sonic quality that the volume provides and the build quality. It's a lovely sturdy cast aluminium case, very robust build, wear free pedal sensor so there's no potentiometer there to go wrong and and it looks lovely too so what more can you ask so i'd like to say thank you everyone for watching and um, it's been good chatting and if you have any questions you can always always ask them on facebook or on Namubu or on twitter and catch us in so thank you very much if you want more information please go to www.sonus.com thank you good evening